Christina Watts, a Prince George multimedia artist in Prince George, BC, and today we're going to paint a beach scene. This is going to be really fun, so let's get going. I've got a number of colors on my palette today. There's two different blues, some greens, a uh, yellow ochre, and um, I got a sap green and a phalo green, and of course, our standard white. So the first thing I'm going to do is brush some nice big streaks right over top because I want to make a sky and that needs to be done with extra colors and you'll see that uh, I'm just sort of tackling in some colors here and there. Nice thing about beach scenes is you use a lot of blue and that becomes your standard on your palette. So a lot of blues, a lot of greens. In our beach scene today, we're going to be putting in some waves crashing to shore. And we're using acrylics. So we have um, a, kind of like a medium body acrylic. Uh, I've got a heavier white body acrylic. And the reason for, <clears throat> for that is just so that it spreads nice and smooth on the canvas. See how that white knocked back the blue there. I don't want to over blend my background, so I'm being Careful to get in and get right back out. I'm going to do almost all of the canvas this way. Now, one of the things that's really great about acrylic is that it dries fast. And so you can keep on working, but when you're trying to do a blended background, you need to move extremely fast. And uh, it just kind of lends itself to the spontaneity of the piece. Kind of want to draw in some lines of where, where my beach is, where my wave is going to go, and you know, a bit of the rocks. And there's a lot of composition that comes into play here. So I'm going to start down low. I want, kind of want this section down here to be where my rocks are at. So this down will be rocks. And then I'm thinking, you know, I, I kind of want like a nice bit of a blue background right up to about here. And then I want to put my wave in. So I'm just thinking my wave is gonna kind of come crashing down here and here, and kind of come down over here. And it needs to kind of go up and down. It's a lot like, like a mountain. And it needs to have some kind of a uniform, or not uniform, but an organic look to it. So what we're going to do, sort of bring it up this way, and then down. And that's just a guide. So this is my guide. Obviously, waves are um, crashing waves or white. So um, I'm going to put some white into that. But acrylic, you kind of, for me, I want to start dark and then I'm going to add my lights back in. And then down below, we are going to have another little like section of water here that's going to be very, like almost like a, a secondary little wave or that little swell that kind of pulls up into the wave. And it'll just sort of give this painting a really interesting look. So we've got this wave here, we're going to have some white kind of backwash happening here. And then this part here is going to be some more of kind of the reflection of the sky. So I'm going to start there. Now you notice like I've sort of blocked in my sections and these are looking interesting because we have some great lines happening. We have um, a diagonal line here. We have a lot of horizontal lines, which lend itself to sort of a tranquil, pe tranquil painting. And um, the composition of it is going to start to build from here. There's also a thing called rule of thirds, and I think I've talked about this before, but um, you want to kind of break your canvas up into thirds. Because if, if I was to put that wave right in the center of the canvas, it's not going to look nearly as interesting as if you like raised it or lowered it even. But for this piece, you kind of want to have sort of a raised wave. And uh, I like the, the look of that. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to make this little section here similar to the sky. So I'll just start filling that in. It's always funny with a painting too because they just look like nothing and then out of nowhere they look 
like something. Now for me, I'm putting both different colors of paint on here. I have a darker one and I also have a phalo green. So I will start adding phalo green in here because this is in part of the ocean. You're kind of going to see some of the what's underneath shine through and phalo green is just the best color for that. I think every painting is a lot like anything you'll do in life. You know, you're gonna have this really interesting start. Sometimes you're gonna love your background and then you wanna keep going and you're gonna mess it up. And then, you know, if you push past that awkwardness, you're gonna get to, you know, a masterpiece. Now, right here with my brush, I'm just sort of scumbling and that's just basically um, kind of, I wanna say, it's not that brush stroke like this where you're going side to side, it's just scumbling and that's the term for it and it's just really rubbing the paint into the canvas there. Now this canvas here I did gesso before I started um, and the only reason why I gessoed it this time is because um, it was a painting that I didn't like so I just reused the canvas by gessoing it. And I'm going to add a little bit green over here, that phalo green. And right up here um, and then I'm going to kind of add some of these colors into the wave and this is going to be interesting um, actually I'm going to jump back to this for a second because I do need some whites in here and while it's still wet I'm going to quickly throw some little whites in um, ripples and stuff in water are very much zigzag patterns and depending on how much you zig and zag and where that line needs to go it's where you're going to get some really cool effects. Of course, I am sort of kind of painting a little bit upside down for myself right now, but it, it's all good. I mean, you can get some different strokes in different ways. Also, you need to know acrylic dries a lot darker than um, what you have down. So just make a comp compensate for that. So if you think it's too light right now, chances are it's probably just right because it's going to dry exceptionally dark. And I've lost some of this over here. I'm going to put a little bit of this back in here and there. Some darks. You always need darks with your lights. Just some of that later, but that's pretty good for a start. Sometimes when I'm painting in my art studio, I um, will do it and then I stop for a minute and walk away and I come back and I can see that it needs something else, so I'll put it in. Um, and I get a lot of my clothes painted on because of that. And uh, but it's true, you just kind of sometimes keep adding to it and sometimes you go too far and you wreck it. And if you're like that, there's still hope for you too because guess what, you can still paint over it. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt umber in here because as we're getting kind of closer to the shoreline, I just want a little bit of kind of like maybe what a dark part to the ground here. There we go. It's amazing what you can kind of block in in these short little canvas periods here where you, you know, take a few minutes just to paint and see how far you can get. All right, back to our wave. So I'm going to be using, this is like a primary blue, sort of a darker, almost an ultramarine blue. And the secret to this is you should always go with the form of the wave. So, I mean, good luck getting your wave to look like a wave if you're gonna paint horizontal. You need to paint with the curve of the wave. So my wave is gonna come down and kinda go this way. And this way. And 
and again over here. This is true for watercolors and um, most mediums. You always want to paint with the way that it's shaped. Birch trees are cylinders and you need to paint the curve of them. And if you're going to get into watercolors, one of the things that I like to do is paint with watercolors first. I've actually painted this particular scene with my watercolors and now I'm translating it to acrylic and it's great because you can kind of see what you need to do with both mediums and as long as you know your paints you're going to be able to paint them both ways. I'm adding a little bit of water into my paint now because I kind of want to make this a little bit washy looking so I'm going to run some of these colors in. I'm not necessarily scumbling the paint in like I did below because you want the, the flow of the wave here. And I need to be fairly fast because if I'm not quick with these paints, they're gonna dry and I'm gonna have zero working time for blending. I need the blending time. Did a little bit down here, the scumbling in, not too much, I'm gonna smooth that out. And here, now I can add some of the green, and I did. I just put some phalo green into the mix here. So brown, we have a green. I'm throwing it into some of these blues here. And I'm gonna just draw some clumps down there. I need it to be darker. I'm gonna add more brown. Now if you had a black or like an indigo or something really, really dark, something darker than the blue, you could put that down. I'm just playing with these colors today and seeing how far these guys get me. Also when I only use a few colors on my palette, it's called Color Harmony and we can totally just use those colors and your piece will work out because those colors are everywhere in here. All right, so a few little lumps in there, we'll jump that over here. I just blocked in a section where I'm going to put rocks and guess what rocks are not flat lines so I'm just going to throw a few lumps in there and that needs to be a longer lump thinking about breaking up my shapes and there they are and I'm going to wash off my brush I'm just going to let that part dry for like a minute or two and I'm going to go back into my wave and back into my water and see what we can fix up and adjust there maybe my sky. I'm looking at that sky right now and I'm thinking that could probably use just a hint more of some cobalt blue. Always have your paints nearby so you can grab them, reload. And let's see, our sky is looking, hmm, that feels pretty dry to me. I could almost throw a little bit of yellow ochre in there. This part is wet still. I'm gonna see what I can do here with this yellow ochre. Now if you go over top of yellow, blue with a kind of washed down yellow for sure you're going to get a bit of green so I'm going to try and see what it looks like over top here. There we go. I'm trying to hit it over top of the white. This is a really watered down mix of yellow ochre. And I'm just going for, I don't know, kind of like a hazy, like a little hazy look in the sky. This is always a part two where you're like painting and then you're like, oh no, I've wrecked it. I've wrecked my painting. So just be super careful. And I always say that, it never works out that way. All right, so we're getting a hazy sky there. Um, gonna add a little bit more in here because I can feel like it's gonna kind of come up in the center more. All right, here we go. Good, good, good. Are we at the beach yet? I feel like we're at the beach. I've got a really giant wave painting that I did. It's just huge. And um, it's really impressive to see it in person 
It's so much different than just seeing like a picture of it online. So what is kind of fun about paintings is you can, you know, you might be able to see a picture, but to see it in real life is way more interesting. Okay. Um, thinking maybe I can get away with some of this hazing up here too. Yay. All right. So I'm lucky that worked out. Sometimes it turns green. And we're going to put some more water drops along here. So as you're coming in kind of close to the rocks, you always have like a, just a tiny little bit of waves sort of hitting it right there. And they could be fairly choppy. Oh, we're gonna run some of these lines back up. See my zigzagging pattern? So important when you're doing uh, the water, getting just that look of it. I think, I mean, we've come a long way, this little painting here. And only just a few minutes, like, I mean, this has just been a few short minutes. See what you can do. I used to think I didn't have time to paint because I had kids all the time, right? But if you just got a few minutes, like I said, see how far you can go. You never know. I think the biggest thing for me was putting myself on a timer for art battle. You got 20 minutes to paint. What are you going to pull off? And that's how come I got so good at painting fast. There was always saw something very freeing about it. So this guy over here to me is looking more like a, hmm, like a cloud. Just gonna fix that. And I'm gonna fix that by, oh, I think we need something like that coming up. It's more, more of a swish. And maybe over here. Like maybe it hit some rock over there. Let's go with that. Go with the rock. Make it as I go up. That seemed to be a bit too much for me there. there. What I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of interest. And um, I do need some greens in here. See, I lost them all. However, I got some really nice darks right under here, which is going to make for great shadows. So now I'm going to take that phthalo green and I'm adding it to, this is a cobalt blue, right? Used in the sky. And I'm going to carve down here and into there and carve it in here just in a few spots so it's got that look of, you know, that under, I kind of like that turquoise underwater look. But let's put in some rocks. Rocks, rocks. Rocks are fun. People think they're hard. They're so not hard. All right, here's what we're gonna do for a rock. I'm gonna pretend that there's some bumps here. And all I wanna do is I wanna put a little bit of a highlight, maybe right here. And maybe this one goes right here. And maybe here. Another funny little rock. And here's another guy. And another one here. I always find when I'm painting, I get into Zen mode and I start getting quieter, quieter, quieter. I think that's probably why I watch a lot of other painters paint because we all go into Zen mode. And it's nice to watch at the end of the day some of these little moments where they're just sort of painting away. Throw some rocks in here. Notice how all these rocks are sort of the same color. I'm not too worried about that right now. I'm gonna adjust that in a second with the brown. So brown and that kind of that weird green that I threw on my palette. It's not the phthalo green, it's like the sap green. Now we're just gonna kind of cut in around some of these rocks, give them some, like a bottom to them. Let's say they're a bottom to them. See how there's a rock now? See, there's the side of the rock and maybe We'll adjust this guy here, the side of the rock, and up, and cut it across, and you're just playing with darks and whites right now, so it's all just fun. I know some of you are like, oh yeah, sure, you're just slamming a rock. Well, you can slam in a rock too. 
just don't think too hard. Don't think too hard. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of this white blue light mix to my brown now just to get a lighter color of that brown. And let's see, or maybe just that guy here and over here. I feel like this needs to kind of come up like that. And a couple spots there. Kind of starting to look like I have some rocks forming there. Let's see if I can put some phthalo green into this mix now and get a darker dark. Some that blue. And I'm even going to throw in some yellow. Okay, it doesn't look that dark right now, but believe me, when this all dries, it's going to be so dark you're going to think, ooh, something bad happened there. Maybe some of the seaweed got in behind here. And that can happen, especially at the beach. All right. So we've got some of those rocks. I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit. This one's pretty. Might go back into that. So I'm just going to start to reassess my painting now. Um, see, I'm liking what's happening down here and I'm liking the sky. And if you had like four hours, you could make this absolutely perfect. I'm trying to do this in half an hour for you so that you can get the idea of it and you of course can make something easy like this as well. But now we need to put a little bit of maybe like a light blue back up into the wave and as you can see I was out of white so I just grabbed my paint and I reloaded. Now let's see we want a little bit of a a little bit of like lights coming back down into here. So I'm just gonna zigzag some up and down. And weird. This guy's kind of a funny one over here. I probably would go back and make him dark. Let's see what we can do over here. Now this is where you start to really start playing with your wave. So I find that that was just a little bit much for me over there. So I'm going to cut it out or just drag some of the more darker paint through and create some more lines. And same here. Where are we going with this one? Kind of like that. And you could build up your layers in your wave like all the time we can keep building this layer and building this layer and building this layer and the more you build it is the better it looks like same with the sky same with all those ones and let's not forget our little guy over here which we have to go put white paint into and one thing i'm being careful of is to leave darks up here and that is because guess what the the waves create a shadow then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to clean up some of this stuff. Now I think I have a palette knife. Sometimes I use just all brush with these and sometimes I just run with the palette knife. But if you're going to use a palette knife, just make sure you got it for this job thinly loaded. And we're going to kind of come in and skim it on the canvas. See, it's so neat to just skim it on the canvas give you some nice clean whites here and here and have it kind of come down a bit there. Palette knife work is awesome for wet on wet. There's another good wave. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, but I love the palette knife. Just kidding. I'm not sorry. Let's go put some of these waves back over here. Hit it there, hit it there, hit it there. And 
let's just hit some of these down here. Now, if you notice, I'm just sort of jiggling the brush. Um, this is a really like uh, light of hand, so it might look like I'm just ramming it in there, but I'm not. It's just a, I'm barely touching the canvas, and I'm just feeling the surface of it with with my palette knife. Okay, just feeling the surface of it, and then if you want, you can bring some down here as well. Nothing stopping you. Bring in a little bit more of that sparkle down into the water and stuff down here. And I mean, if you don't like it, like let's say I don't like that spot, it's not a big deal. You just get a wet, damp brush, erase it, erase it. Sometimes it adds to it. And I'm just going to try and clean this little section up here because there would not necessarily be that much down there. I'm not really flying through this one today. Um, I'm going to step back and take a look and uh, think about these rocks. And then we're going to go right back in. I'm going to adjust some of these rocks. This is just white. I'm skimming it on the surface of some of these rocks to just sort of pull them out because they're hiding. So I hope you guys at home really pull out your paints and try this painting because this is such a cool one to do. Now you can kind of see some of these rock formations a little bit better. You can really get in here and adjust them with all kinds of tools. Um, palette knives do work good for this too, but they don't have to be perfect. I mean, these are, you know, just rocks that sort of are different along the shore. And they poke up every which way and they're all kinds of different colors. So don't stress out for rocks. I don't know that there's too much more that I could add to this piece other than the, um, the odd adjustment here and there. I'm going to put in a horizontal line and then I'm going to sign it. So this is going to be a very careful line right up here just so that you're, I'm breaking up the shore with the sky. And it's fairly watered down brush with a little bit of white on it. There we are. Now I'm going to grab a little brush, grabbing a little round brush for this. And um, I find it hard to sign a painting. I'll get this far and I'll be like, oh no, it's a signature part. Oh, what am I gonna do? They make all kinds of tools out there now for this. I'm gonna choose yellow and I'm gonna make my little scratch scratch of a signature on this one. And then we're gonna see how it looks. All right, so let's sign this one. Well, thanks for watching and you have yourself an artful day.